we need administrator or root privileges so log in as that go down to our iOS bar down here you'll see system preferences at the top click on that that brings up our system preferences in the center you'll see administration and also to the left I'm gonna start with system so click on that underneath the administration you'll see some tabs I'm gonna start with system you'll see iOS host name put that in now we're gonna choose our default language if you come over and then click on the language you should see a drop down menu now if you don't see the language you desire or any at all we need to install some how we do this is we go to applications you can also find this in your iOS bar down there you'll see at the top of our applications there is a install app click that that brings up our package manager hit refresh and on the left hand side there's categories go to translations and that will show you all the current translations that we have choose the one that you want or at the top there's an all-in-one then click install now you want to either refresh or log in or log out and in then go back to our administration system and then click on our default language and then that should show a list of the ones that you installed now another good thing for you to have that is if you have other users that are going to be on your iOS system um, we can have Spanish German and English even all on one system and they can all have their own language our default language settings the next thing is to protect session by IPs basically this is a security feature that let's say I'm at home doing my things and somebody is trying to get into my system it will lock them out so it's two different IPs can't get in the same way so you can choose to either have that on or off if you don't log off correctly in things and try to access it somewhere else you might not be able to get in now below that user quota this is very simple you can either enable it or disable it if I'm an administrator and I know that I'm going to have a lot of people using it you're probably going to want to have it enabled so they don't use up your entire hard disk we have some choices with it and our drop down you can either put bytes kilobytes megabytes or gigabytes and then you can put the appropriate number next to it for example if I want them to have one gigabyte it's simple I type in one and then I go to the one gigabyte and then it is a good idea to always save changes after you change all of that so hit save changes now the next tab is permissions we can allow user registration that's very simple what you do is if you enable it and you go into the login you'll see new user at the bottom they can just simply put their username um, you know they can make up one and password and then they have they're able to log in to your iOS system if you don't want them to be able to do it and you prefer to do it then keep it disabled allow public directories that's simple um, you know we have our home folder for each person and that's our private directory uh, no one else can access it but us by logging in but if you want people to be able to share their ideas or writing papers or what have you 
then there you can enable a public directory and everyone can go to this one directory and access information or share information. Now below that is allow web uploads. Fairly simple. You know, most of the time uh, we have two different ways of uploading. Uh, we can upload by just the simple browse one thing. There's our flash uploader that we can, can select a group of things to upload at one time. And this is our web uploader where if you find something on the web, you can just type in the URL and it will download it from that website directly to the server. Then hit save changes. Now we're going to go to our office support. Now right here I'm using a Linux server so it tells me to please follow the instructions at the wiki ios.org. Um, there's instructions there to tell you how to get our office support enabled. Um, now if you have a Windows server it will go ahead and tell you some more things about it. Um, it'll tell you some simple things for you to do to get it enabled. And once you follow those instructions you'll have full office support. Now the next tab is uninstall. Uh, self-explanatory. Um, it gives you the uh, version, version that you're using, uh, 1.7.0.0 for me. Uh, then it requires a root password, which is good. So, you know, you left the room and somebody can't come and play with you and then uninstall it. Now, to the left, you'll see administration. We're going to go down to manage users. I'll give you a little pop-up box to show users so that way if we have 500 users we can have a way of sorting them a little bit. Do what you need to appropriately there. Then it will give us the list of users and then on top we have new. You can create new users. Um, we can edit the old users and then we can delete them. Now we'll go through making a new user real quick. Just click on new user. You need to put their username, what name they're going to log in as. Then we need to give them a password. Then we need to put their full name if we want to. It's optional. We can put their email. And then we have permissions which they have options right now for user, maintainer, and administrator. Then below we have groups, what groups will we want to belong to. And then we can create users. Now I'm going to make a whole other video dealing with permissions and groups. So stay tuned for that. Now when you're done, hit create user. And if you ever change uh, their rights or anything, you just go to edit and you can change it that way. Now go back to your left and there's administration. And we're going to go to manage groups. Here it's pretty much the same as managing users somewhat, but well, we're in groups. Uh, one nice thing is that it also has that we can set as default group. So every time you add a user, it will default to that group. We'll go over that more in the other video I was talking about earlier. Now if you go to your left and go to administration, you'll see repositories. Now repository is basically where we get our information for our applications. If you recall earlier we went to our translations in our um, package manager and this is telling the package manager where to look for our applications. If we go through, we can hit new so we can add another repository. We can edit the current one. We can test to make sure it's working or we can delete one. Now if you go back to your administration on the left, you'll see clean iOS. And here it checks 
to see if you need any uh, temporary files removed from iOS. If you do not, you'll see your iOS server does not need cleaning.